mild spoilers ahead with greater spoilers deeper into the video. When a crystal-based magic plague ravages the world, someone needs to step up and shoulder the burdens of the masses. Someone needs to rise up and shield the oppressed and diseased everyman from the society that wishes to crush them down and marginalize them. Clearly, the best option for that is a donkey- sorry, Bunny, who isn't even out of high school yet. Hell, we don't know if she'd be in high school. We don't even know what she's capable of. I mean, her medical record doesn't even want to pretend to know what's going on, so I'm sure as hell not going to. Good evening, I'm Weasley, and today, in the first of a series of Operator Spotlights, I found it only fitting to cover the face of Arknights the de facto protagonist of the game, and the CEO of Rhodes Island, Amiya. I want to preface this section by saying that, even though it's marked lore, I don't plan on doing an absolute deep dive into the operator here. Instead, I'm going to give a brief overview and shine some light on certain aspects of their character. I wanted to include something, of course, but these spotlights are still primarily gameplay focused. With that in mind, here goes. When looking at the Rim Billiton born Amiya, you'd be forgiven for thinking that she's an inexperienced donk bunny in a position meant for someone far older than her. Amiya, despite appearances, actually does a fantastic job as the CEO of the hybrid pharmaceutical private military company that is Rhodes Island. Though she certainly kicks a fair amount of ass on the battlefield, however, Amiya also shines in diplomatic circumstances not even hesitating when negotiating with public figures like Wei Yen Wu or Chen Hui Che. If this goddess wants something, rest assured, she'll get it, and leave everyone wondering how a four-foot- Did I just read that right? Let's see. Yep, four-foot-eight rabbit was able to leave with exactly what she was after. With the cell originium assimilation of 19%, Amiya's tied with Ifrit for being perhaps one of the most infected individuals at Rhodes Island. And like Ifrit, Amiya's medical record has more black ink than the average SCP document. I guess Cal wants to keep something secret for now. I really dove headfirst into this project, because Amiya is literally the only operator where her archetype and rarity aren't cut and dry. Amiya's starting archetype, and the one players will be the most familiar with, is that of a 5-star core caster, specializing in single-target arts damage at a reasonable DP cost to reasonable effect. They won't break the game wide open, but they'll definitely get the job done, and are a great and effective component of any team. Amiya is, on a technical level, one of the strangest operators in Arknights. She eschews the typical 5-star model of having two skills for instead having three, and yet still keeps the one talent model and max level of 5-star operators. Top that off with what can only be described as a proto-altar system, and she makes for quite a strange amalgamation of mechanics. All that being said, though, her gameplay is actually pretty easy to understand. As one might expect, Amiya is a perfect choice for one of the first core operators in any Doctor's squad. Respectable damage, respectable health, a fair cost, and an S1 that frankly does more than expected, actually all combine to make Amiya a fantastic and simple early game pick. Now, at E1, Amiya gains her second skill and, uniquely, E1 promotion art. For all intents and purposes, you likely won't find many doctors using S2 in general content, especially not at the point which you unlock it for reasons I'll cover later. However, the S2 still provides some technical AoE capability for this aspiring rabbit. Where Amiya truly shines, however, is her E2. At E2, Amiya gains access to a proper talent that restores her SP with each hit, and even more with each kill. But that's not what's worth writing home about, as good as it is. In addition to this talent, she also gains access to, in the only case for a 5-star, her third skill. Buffing her damage, survivability, range, and adding true damage to the mix makes Amiya a true force to be reckoned with, at the cost of a forced retreat at the end of the skill. I'll dive deeper into each aspect of Amiya's kit, but for now, just know that Amiya's a simple-to-use character that does a good job of everything, but takes investment before she truly excels within her category. 
Please note that, for the sake of the numbers in this section, skill level 7 is assumed. Great, well-rounded stats are one thing, but any good doctor knows that an operator needs their skills to truly shine, and Amiya's skills are nothing to scoff at. Amiya's first skill, Tactical Chant Gamma, confers an attack speed buff of 60 to our small CEO. With an easy-to-reach SP cost of 32, and an initial SP boost of 10 on deployment. Trust me when I say not to write the skill off as typical S1 fodder, because a speed increase of 60% is actually nothing to scoff at. If you don't need a Mia specifically for her S2 or S3, and are just looking for a general source of arts damage without any bells or whistles, look no further than S1. It has you covered. Is S1 worth mastering, however? Uh, no. Almost definitely not. Though the attack speed buff will climb from 60 to 90 at M3, of course, an effectiveness increase of 50%, the SP cost will barely drop, bottoming out at 30. On top of that, well, if you're at the point of the game where you're considering mastery, you almost definitely have way better candidates than Amiya S1. Our second skill gets a great deal more specialized. Spirit Burst, though unlocked at E1, is an oddity in that it's generally only considered to be usable at E2, thanks to Amiya's talent adding some much-needed SP generation to this 100 SP cost skill. Yeah, you heard that right. Top that off with the fact there's not even an initial SP boost, and S2 doesn't come out looking so hot already. That's not to say it's a bad skill by any means. 7 attacks, launching out with 45% attack each, comes out to a total attack of 315% of Amiya's standard, spread between all enemies within range. However, this all comes at the cost of a 10 second self-stun on skill end. This skill can definitely see some use in specific situations that require it, but generally? Stick to an AoE caster. S2 mastery is a little more complicated of an equation than S1. M1 is something of a breakpoint, adding an additional attack to the mix for a total of 8 attacks at 50% power, bringing the total attack up to a cool 400% of standard. Past that though, you notice a sharp fall off in effectiveness, capping out at 8 attacks with 60% power, coming out to a total of 480% standard. While bigger numbers are always better, the biggest number to consider here is still the outrageous 100 SP cost, which, no, does not improve with mastery. I'd take a pass on this one with M1 if you really want to use the skill. Now for the oddity that is a 5 stars third skill, an oddity which Amiya alone possesses. Amiya's S3, Chimera, may remind you of the previous Spirit Burst, what with its absurd SP cost, that being 120, and total lack of starting SP. Noticing a trend? On top of that, even worse than S2, Amiya's forced to retreat at the end of S3's duration. However, Chimera makes up for its failings by, unlike S2, actually seeing some use. An additional 160% attack 75% more HP, and a range increase would, on their own, come out to be a kick-ass skill. But true damage got thrown in the mix, and the result is quite incredible for the investment. This will likely be the first source of true damage a new Doctor has, barring some very lucky pulls, and it will most definitely not disappoint. After all, some bosses, such as Patriot or Anduin, virtually require true damage to be killed due to their high defense and res, or even the existence of dodge. Now, is it incredible enough to consider for mastery? Honestly, if you're gonna use the skill as your main, or even one of your main, true damage sources, yeah, it's a pretty worthy contender. Plus 160% attack becomes plus 230% attack at M3, and the 75% extra HP becomes 100% extra HP. Before you bite the bullet though, another similarity with S2 rears its ugly head. The lack of an SP decrease. You could pump as many resources as you want into this skill, 
and it'll always cost 120 SP with a zero initial SP. Lastly, I'm going to briefly touch upon Amiya's talent. Though technically Amiya gains a talent at E1, a bunch of question marks on her record doesn't actually do anything to her combat performance. At E2, this mystery talent is upgraded to Emotional Absorption. With this talent, Amiya gains an additional plus 2 SP on each hit, plus 3 at max potential, and plus 8 SP on each kill, plus 10 at max potential. All it takes is one look at Amiya's beefy S2 and S3 costs to realize exactly why this talent is essential to her kit. And why, like I said, S2 is considered to be nigh unusable until E2. Does this talent fix the issue of Amiya's high SP costs? Not entirely, but it sure as hell makes them that much more tolerable. Besides, if you still can't stomach those costs, her S1 is always a solid, if not basic, option for our small CEO to wreak havoc with, made only better by this talent. SP Batteries I'm going to immediately get that out of the way. If you're using a skill that isn't named Tactical Chant, an SP battery will help a good bit. Are they needed? No, definitely not, but they'll definitely help make your life a little easier and save you valuable time charging those skills. Sad, you need to keep something important in mind when using a Mia. Emotional absorption is your best friend, and it won't do anything if other amazing operators keep stealing Amiya's hits and kills. This can make optimal Amiya placement sometimes a little awkward, as you need to keep in mind that she needs a good, steady flow of enemies to grow big and strong. And, you know, charge her skills. As for any other operator synergies with Amiya, a buff, like from Warfarin or Sculter, certainly wouldn't go amiss. But maybe keep Axe, Stim, point to somewhere else. Amiya does not have the durability to tank such a thing. In the realm of comparison, Amiya comes out fairly favorably when pitted against similar options. I say fairly because she's very much a middle-of-the-road pick, barring S3, and this causes her to fall into a jack-of-all-trades niche, or lack thereof. Barring the obvious and rather unfair comparisons against, like, AF Yala and Golden Glow, Amiya is commonly compared against two operators specifically, the 4-star Haze and the much more commonly compared 4-star Click. Let's break down each. Haze is, quite honestly, Amiya's more favorable matchup. Though Haze comes out on top when it comes to the costs of both deployment and investment, as well as having a great damage output with her S2, Amiya still trumps her when it comes to both sheer stats and utility, what with the existence of Amiya S3's true damage. On top of that, any extra DPS from Amiya's S1 doesn't come at the cost of practically nuking her HP like Haze S2 does. Use Haze if you'd like, but personally, I think Amiya wins this one by a reasonable margin. Click, on the other hand, is a matchup you often see brought up in places like the Ark Knight subreddit or Discord server. Despite technically being different archetypes, with Click being a mecha cord caster, they actually end up filling very similar niches. This is thanks in no small part to the ease with which both of them are obtained and the similar role on the battlefield. Both of them deal arts damage, and both attack one target at a time, generally. When it comes to utility, I think it can definitely be argued that Amiya wins thanks to the existence of her S3, but in regards to general use, I have to give this one to Click. Though her attack is seemingly quite a bit lower than Amiya's, Click users will find that the Mecha Cord ramp-up mechanic will end up being more than a match, and the stun plus attacking outside of range utility of Click's daily use S2 is certainly a nice touch. I'd say Amiya still wins in the sheer strength of her niche, while Click almost always edges ahead in content where Amiya S3 isn't needed or used. Pretty fair matchup, all things considered.
Amiya is one of the most dependable casters a new doctor will have, and even experienced doctors will often find uses for her on their team. Guiding ahead, anyone? She won't set the world on fire, but she'll sure as hell make sure that you get through your daily life safely. With good stats, respectable skills, and admittedly, a great story presence, Amiya will help guide you towards those coveted full clears. Just make sure you keep an eye on those SP costs. Right. There's another one. I'll get to that another time. Hey, thanks for watching. I've been looking for ways to fill the time in my life and figure I might as well help share the passion that I have for Arknights in a way that can also educate people on some of the nuances of the game. On top of that, though I've learned a good bit in my two years of playing, there's always more for me to learn, so giving me an excuse to use lesser used operators will hopefully mean that we can learn some neat things together as a group. I'd also like to thank a couple friends of mine who helped me out with writing the script in more than one way. You guys are great editors, and also helped me with the drive to keep this going. This is Weasley, signing off. Here's to more, eh?